Hello, everyone, and welcome back to today's episode of the DM Shower Thoughts, the show where we talk about our shower thoughts in 5th edition Dungeons and & Dragons and other tabletop scenarios and how to become your best self through gaming. My name is Adamus. I'm John. Oh, and uh, joining me today, we have our new kitten, Chadwick the Cat, um, who you may hear meowing in the background as I talk. Hi, Chadwick. And I'm Ian, without a cat. No. Oh. oh my god, the video of this, this kitten, is adorable. So before I uh, die from cuteness, let's uh, have a shower thought, shall we? Sounds good. Uh, I figure we'll start off with one of the burning questions I've had about D&D, which is how you make an evil campaign successful. A lot of campaigns are usually good aligned. I would even go so far as to say about 80 to 90% of them are good aligned. And that's just because of this assumption that Wizards of the Coast kind of makes when creating the setting that your characters are supposed to be kind of archetypical heroes. You are looking to save the realm from, you know, an impending threat. Uh, or you're gonna go on an adventure and just help out some people because you're nice guys. And it makes sense because most people, when they come to these kinds of fantasy settings, uh, they're more interested in living out this, this heroic tale of, I am known throughout the land for being this really great guy. And I'm good at the things I do, whatever those things are. So like monk, barbarian, however you wanna do it. But there is still a niche to be filled with evil campaigns, because some people are interested in that cloak and dagger. That's why in The Elder Scrolls IV Oblivion, there are the Dark Brotherhood, and they are an assassin's guild that are all sneaky and shadowy, and they just, their whole job is to kill people for money. And that makes sense, because a world is not fleshed out unless you have a dark and a light side of the coin. So when you wanna create an evil campaign, how do you really go about that without oversaturating the the generally good good aligned morals of the player and making the character come to life through these evil aligned decisions and that's that's my question really because it sounds cool in theory but just because so few people do it it can be difficult to really to really make that campaign successful a lot of people when they approach the the evil campaign concept are coming from it uh, from a place of chaos. And that chaos can be really <sighs> taxing on the game state and the setting itself. Uh, a lot of people will approach it like a kid would. I'm evil! <laughs> and they're just there to see the world burn. There is a chaos, uh, a chaotic evil uh, aspect that I've seen a few people play out and that's when the the campaign or even the one shot scenario in an evil setting or an evil 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 characters if you will just sort of implodes there's no trust among the the players or there's no values there are no uh standards or bonds or even just standard traits beyond i'm evil <laughs> and i'm i'm saying it like that because it's like a little kid going i'm evil i break it because it's i want to break it i break it because i can uh, and there's a different kind of relationship there. Whereas if we really delve deep into the nuance of what makes a character evil, it's more about the gradient between their decisions and what they're willing to do. Whereas I think a good aligned character has a lot, has like a line they don't cross. And maybe an evil character crosses that line or their, their relationship with their choices has a deeper meaning and nuance to what they do and how they do it and why they do it. Like the ends justify the means. Maybe they are actually making a good choice or a good point to hit. Maybe what they're doing is has a has a good outcome, but the way there, they justify the means, even if the means consider evil acts. And there's a higher complexity there. You can have, you know, a neutral evil entity, and they're just willing to cross that line that a good creature wouldn't or there's a code that they, they follow that's different from others. And I've seen other people be lawful evil. They wanna be crime lords and they know that what they're doing, like the actions, the individual actions that they take are probably evil in the eyes, like they are committing evil acts or even monstrous acts. But the end result is they are creating an order. There are too many crime bosses. There's too much chaos, people. There's too much going on. I make the world 
a more orderly place by becoming the one that rules them all and destroying the competition. So now it, the status quo is not quo and I need to break it and rebuild it. And there, that was also very interesting when you think about, are these evil characters instead the heroes of their own story given their new perspectives? That's how we can, at least from my point of view, you can deepen this, this role-playing understanding and deepen where their choices lie beyond the chaos. So Ian mentioned something which is good to keep in mind, which is Wizards of the Coast assumes that your characters are going to be heroic. How that her heroism manifests, of course, is going to be different to each individual player. Um, and th there's room to make other decisions. But ultimately, like, there is this kind of underlying assumption with a lot of D&D stories that your characters are good. Whether, whether they're the good alignment or they're neutral or whatever, they aren't going to help Tiamat destroy the realms, right? Or they're not going to uh, to help, you know, the true enemy of Storm King's Thunder, or they're not gonna help the elemental eye um, and the four evil elemental cults or anything like that in Princes of the Apocalypse. I would disagree that most players are excited by that, right? Most players, when they, they come to D&D, are used to having a game experience be structured and limited, right? So even if they come from like a board game or a video game, even an open world video game, um, like if we take Skyrim or Witcher as an example, when you talk to people, you still have limited dialogue options. You can't just say anything and then have the story respond in real time in the way that you can in a tabletop scenario. That sheer freedom is what excites players. The fact that they really could try anything. And, you know, there are some things that are destined not to work, but the fact that there is a die roll of, well, maybe this could work. That's what excites players. And what can happen, and we experienced this introducing Dungeons and Dragons um, to our community, was some players would go out of their way to pick the chaotic option just to kind of see what would happen. And it wasn't necessarily evil, it was just chaotic, right? So it's how do we mess with the DM? How do we mess with the serious story? When it comes to, I think there's a difference between an evil campaign and evil characters. And I think having that distinction is a little bit more useful and a little bit more actionable as a tool. So for me, like you were saying, Adam, an evil character is someone who's willing to cross certain moral lines in order to complete an outcome, right? Sometimes that outcome is good, sometimes it's neutral, sometimes it's evil. So like if uh, the outcome is I wanna get paid, somebody is willing to pay me a lot of money to kill another NPC, right? And it's more the Dark Brotherhood storyline. That is an evil act and the outcome is also evil. There's a dead person, but the motive is neutral. The motive is get paid. And like we were talking about earlier today, getting paid is just what you do. Like, why do you work at Subway? To get paid. It's not an evil outcome, right? But, you know, there's a difference between making somebody a $5 footlong and killing them. So like, you know, it's, it's what can define an evil character are the methods they are willing to partake in in order to reach an outcome. Sometimes you have characters that are looking for a good outcome. So this reminds me of like Alucard from Helsing, right? Where he is a monster that does monstrous things and he doesn't even care about innocent bystanders. It's, he'll just shoot him, he doesn't care. But the overall outcome is he's removing other monsters from the world. So it's a, it's a net good outcome through an evil method that may produce more evil than good. And that's another interesting question. And then you've got characters that are evil for evil's sake, right? So it's an evil outcome of, I wanna be in control and I wanna be powerful. I don't care, whoever gets in my way has to be crushed and they all have to bow to me, right? That's kind of like the Loki in Avengers kind of like, you know, it's an evil selfish outcome. There's no debate to it. And the methods are also evil. So I think the difference between evil characters and an evil campaign is that an evil campaign is an exploration of 
the evil decisions that you know you are going to make. Whereas a gray campaign, there's usually an evil neutral good option. You know going into an evil campaign that you're gonna be doing up to evil stuff. So to me, I personally find the gray model kind of more interesting. Um, although again, you might have players that find value in exploring the evil options and both as a player and whatever character they create, what lengths they're willing to go to and what lengths they aren't. Thank you so much for listening to some of our podcast highlights. This podcast is part of the Darkmoor Podcast Network. If you want to support the content creators, feel free to visit our Patreon. And please, game responsibly.